Okay, guys, um, today we are going to do um, rotations based on your CGA data um, in preparation for FCAT. Okay, so today I'm going to give you a prescription. The prescription card, I got the idea from my specialist. She had told me that someone else had used it. So that's, I took that idea and I ran with it. I um, looked at which benchmarks I was going to do. I figured out what I was going to do for each rotation. So it was going to be a, a, the same kind of setup. They would have some notes, an activity with analysis, and then the five question and answer, the five QA. Um, so after I had that particular setup, I could develop that prescription card. I looked at the four benchmarks that I was going to use and identified what each student needed based on you know which benchmark they were lowest in progressing or below target and from there I could set my groups up. What I want you guys to do right now look at the rotations that you're going to go to first and then second. Okay? I want you to find that particular benchmark on your CGA data and I want you to tell me if you were below target or if you were progressing by circling it on your paper. So on mine, if I was at SC7 L17 2, okay, and I was below target, I would circle the below target for that particular benchmark. This wasn't the first time I've done rotations in my classroom, but this was the first time I've done it for differentiated instruction. So I wanted my students to get benefit for, for their individual needs using their CGA data. Um, I've used rotations before, but it was targeting one specific benchmark and having them do different things for that one particular need. I feel that the benefit of this is I can hit more benchmarks and review with them before FCAT. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start going over that. I think that it helps them, one, take ownership of the learning. Um, they can see that I've chosen these two particular benchmarks based on their need, but I did notice that when I gave them the option to choose their own, they had their CGA data in front of them and they're looking at it saying, this is what I need. Oh, I'm progressing here, so I still need some more help. Let me go to this one. So I think it gives them more buy-in of their learning and, and gives them ownership of it. All right, so the people that you're sitting with at your group may not necessarily be the same people you're sitting with at the second station. Is everybody okay? All right, awesome, thank you. Okay, so the timing of the stations. We have 25 minutes in each station. I've packed a lot of stuff in here, so we really need to make sure that we are moving and we're on time. The first five minutes I want you to spend on the notes, either highlighting or reading it. I'm gonna go ahead and post my timer. I want you to quickly move to your stations and we're gonna get started. Okay, so you guys are going to Science Buddies first, all right? And then you're going to look at the different types of sciences and look at the careers and find some that completely interest you and then try to put them into the concept map right there into the graphic organizer here so we are looking at our guided notes once you're finished with this okay in a couple of minutes I want you to move to the pattern puzzle and the different types of boundaries I want you to use this to complete this you have your Venn diagram and then you have your different types of relationships once you've gotten that then you complete the matching game okay the matching game has different cards and the analysis questions go with that. Um, All right. You know how they got these um, mountain ranges? Mm -hmm. How we found that they're mainly on convergent boundaries? Mm -hmm. The convergent boundaries is always just going to be convergent. They can't like change and slide and stuff. All right. Will convergent boundaries change and slide? Like they can't. They can't become divergent. If the mantle changes underneath it if it happens to the convection current changes underneath it but all of these land masses they're still moving they're not stationary right now so right now like these two plates are moving away from each other the Atlantic Ocean is getting bigger by a couple of centimeters every single year uh, and that's what making earthquakes and stuff that's what makes earthquakes that's what makes volcanoes that's what makes mountain ranges okay but, well, another question I got, it says, what do you think caused these mountain ranges to form? And wouldn't the answer just be the boundaries, and the convergent what, boundaries? There you go. Oh. Because when they come together, remember when we did that thing where you push together and you build a mountain? Okay. What made you think that the cleaner fish specifically went with a shark? Because they both scrap food. And so this one has food scraps and parasites in its mouth, what does this one need? They need food scraps. So do they both get a, a benefit out of this? Yes. What does the shark get? 
he gets clean, and then what does the cleaner fish get? Food. Food. Okay. So with mutualism, both of them, they help each other out. Very good. And that is part of number two on your analysis. You have to come up with an original definition. So in your own words, what do you think mutualism means? All right, guys, so that is time for the first rotation. All right, so let's make sure that our stuff is inside the basket and let's rotate quickly to your next station. Okay, this is my, my daughter playing soccer. She scored her first goal this weekend. Woo! Okay, <laughs> so this is her kicking the ball, scoring a goal. I want you at each point to diagram where the forces are and where, how they're acting. Are they acting um, going this way or that way? Um, which one's the unbalanced force? And then it's going to be your turn. You're going to wad up a paper ball, and you can either drop it, you can lightly tap it, we don't throw it, <laughs> okay? And I want you to diagram your paper ball. There's blue paper in the basket, so you can make a paper ball. Don't throw it, Ashley. Toss it. Okay, ready? Do it. <laughs> 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 oh, no, I think this is where we dropped it. Because you know we left I didn't it. We didn't drop it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Okay, we, it, before, that's what I'm saying, when we threw it in the air, this, this is when, when we, we threw it in the air, and then this is when we touched it, so this yeah. when we hit it, that's when we pushed it, and this is when it went through the distance. And, yeah. So what kind of force, okay, at point A, what forces are acting on the object? Um, not that much, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> well here, this is before she kicked the ball, yeah, right? Yeah, throw, that's when we had pushed it, it up. Yeah, tossed well, it up, and then we hit it. Is it moving at that point? It was because no. we, we right no right here oh, at that no. one no, no. That's so is there a force that's acting on it? No. no. Okay. What about here? What's the force acting on the object? It's being pushed yeah. ahead. It's being pushed ahead by what? Her foot. Her foot. Okay. <laughs> so Adams are smaller than. So did he waste his money? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so yes, he did waste his money because you can't see the nucleus of an atom with a microscope because it's still way too small. So what does that mean about methods and tools that scientists use from different fields? Are they interchangeable just because we use it in one field? Can we no. use it in another? Does it mean that we can't use it? No, no not necessarily. I mean, sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. So what does that mean about how we gather information? We use different methods. We have different methods. We have different tools in different fields. So you are above target for plate tectonics. No, we weren't talking about plate tectonics. Here's right life here. science. SC6P. Oh, no, we already did that one. Uh -huh. Oh, no, it was one I was progressing on. Right there. Me and the dog. Caterpillar tree because you know, eats the whole thing of these killing trees. So we're supposed to put them together based off what they do. Mr. Toe, Thor, fine. Take worm, tree. Alright, so as you can talk to blah. How do you say it? It's a wasp. It lays eggs inside caterpillars. So once you put it to the caterpillar. Mutualism, benefit and benefits. Oh, I can't say that. Le leeches and needs a, re a reliable supply. Bees, spiders, crocodile, a flower, goby fish. Oh, bee and the flower. Mm -hmm. So the first part of the title of Pangea is what do you think caused the land mass to move? Mm -hmm. Earthquakes. I think. Like divergent type earthquakes that cause it to spread apart. And the second one says, Where are most major mountain ranges located? And I would say, Yeah. Along there. So I'm um, along the edge of a plate. How did you guys feel about the individual rotations? Do you feel that you still need some more work or that we are okay with it? I think we should do it again. You think that we should do it again? The same benchmarks or different benchmarks? I mean, the ones that majority of the class has problem with. Okay. All right, because I want to continue doing this and up until we go to FCAT.
in the past, when I've, I've planned rotations, it's just been for one particular benchmark, and I would set up that day's lesson, those rotations, with an I do center, a we do center, and a you do center. And it, you know, it takes the, the normal amount of time to plan that lesson. With this one, because I was choosing four different benchmarks, I had to plan four I do's, four we do's, four you do's, and it, it took quite a bit more time. However, the benefit of it is going to be reflected in my students. Um, one thing that would be beneficial or helpful when planning this would be during common planning maybe to delegate it out between individuals. Um, if we're all going to choose the same four benchmarks, you come up with an idea for this particular activity or for this benchmark and just kind of maybe create a bank of activities.